Our birth of the Beatles series had some particular highlights, and I thought I'd bring them all together into one video in chronological order. They were definitely the most popular bits. Three things happened over a two-week period in the summer of 1957. John's first band, The Quarrymen, had their very first gig. And then two weeks later, they had a much bigger gig on the day he met Paul. First of all, let's take a look at the very first documented gig by The Quarrymen, the band that would become The Beatles. We went to Rosebury Street in Toxteth to see where they played and looked at one of the only photographs taken that day and asked ourselves, is that Paul McCartney in the crowd? Two weeks before he even met Lennon. It's a delicious thought that Paul could have watched that gig and was then captured inadvertently on the photograph, only to be identified by internet armchair detectives 60 years later. Let's look at the investigation. Let me transport you back to the Rosebury Street gig on the 22nd of June 1957. Let's look at where they played and let's examine that mysterious photograph. Played on the back of a flatbed coal lorry outside Charlie's house on Rosebury Street. Rosebury Street was sadly demolished in the 1970s, but that's where we're going to next. And here I am at Rosebury Street. So if we go along here, this is quite a short street and doesn't bear any resemblance to how the street used to look. But roughly in the middle of this street is the site of the quarrymen's very first gig. on the 22nd of June, 1957. And that spot is about here, in the middle of Rosebury Street. This is the approximate location of Charlie Roberts' house. The coal lorry would have been about here. The quarrymen would have been at the top of it. The cables from the amps would have gone through the window to Charlie Roberts' mother's front room. I'm gonna get out of the middle of the street now because this is a residential area. I'm now on a private property just off Rosebury Street. Uh, one of the local residents has very kindly allowed me to use his garden. Opposite is the approximate location of Charlie Roberts' mother's house. It's only a short street, but here's where history happened. This gig took place exactly two weeks before the Lennon and McCartney meeting, two weeks later, on the 6th of July 1957. The next street along is Hatherley Street. One side of the street has got modern housing on it. But the other side is identical to Rosebury Street. That's going to give us an idea as to how Rosebury Street would have looked in 1957. The houses were all built at the same time, presumably by the same builder. These houses have the same brickwork, same archways, same bay windows that we see at Rosebury Street prior to demolition in the 70s. Charlie tells us that local lads didn't take too kindly to John winking at their girlfriends. And the mood is said to have turned a little bit ugly. Actually, he might not have been winking. He might have been squinting because he wasn't wearing his glasses. That's not cool. Sensing the mood changing and before anything kicked off, the quarrymen jumped off the truck and took refuge at Charlie's house over the road where they enjoyed his mother's hospitality for an hour. And then they all went home. So we have Charlie to thank for this gig and the photographic record that we have of that day. Charlie went on to be a graphic designer and he even designed the graphics for the quarry men's bass drum. Now this photograph is not as famous as the photograph that was taken two weeks later at Walton. Hopefully this video will contribute in some small way to this photograph becoming just a little bit more famous. But it should be more famous for one possibly overlooked reason. Is this Paul McCartney inadvertently photographed in the crowd? There are mixed views on the subject. We need to do a deep dive and take a look at the evidence. This is one of three photos taken by Charlie that day. He'd borrowed a camera and these were the first photos he'd ever taken. The photo is interesting enough given that it's a live quarrymen gig prior to Lennon meeting McCartney. But in chat rooms and blogs, armchair detectives are transfixed on this character in the bottom right hand corner. Is this McCartney? Many dismiss the idea for two main reasons. Certainly at first glance it doesn't much look like him. And besides, Paul doesn't wear glasses. But here's the evidence that this could be Paul. The bike. Paul cycled 
everywhere in 1957, there's irrefutable proof that he cycled to Walton Village on the 6th of July 1957, the day he met John. Multiple eyewitnesses said so. Paul wasn't a local lad, so he did need a bike. Walton is a 13-minute bike ride from his home at 20 Fourth Lynn Road. Toxteth, where this photo was taken, is a 19-minute bike ride. All the lads in this photograph would be local lads, except this guy. Have a look at how he's standing. Look at his gait. Why are his arms outstretched? And why is his back arched in that way? Could he be standing astride his bike? I think he is. He cycled from Fourth Lynn Road to watch the gig and the bike is still underneath him. He'll have known about this gig from their mutual friend Ivan Vaughan, who was to introduce them two weeks later. He's holding the handlebars and he's standing astride the frame of the bike. That was a busy street party and there would have been nowhere safe to leave his bike, so he kept it with him. Let's look at this character's height. Paul is over 5 foot 11. The average height of males in England in the 50s was 5 foot 7. This fits. This man is significantly taller than the rest of the crowd, even with his legs splayed over the bike. Paul did wear glasses. Buddy Holly had made them look quite cool. And whilst we don't see Paul wearing glasses in the Beatles, there's plenty of photos pre-Beatles of him wearing glasses. The jacket. This guy is wearing a very light jacket. Everyone else has dark clothing. Paul was well known for wearing his favourite light coloured jacket with a metallic glistening thread. This is Paul on the beach in that same year, 1957, wearing what I think is the same jacket. He was famously and irrefutably wearing a light coloured jacket two weeks after this photograph was taken at his meeting with Lennon at the Walton Church Fete. Let's have a good look at his face. It's in profile and he's wearing glasses, which makes it hard. But this could be Paul. In fact, the more you look at the photograph, the more it looks like him. To my knowledge, no one has ever shown this photo to Paul, but I think we're looking at history here. If I was interviewing McCartney, this is the first thing I'd ask him. This is McCartney two weeks before he ever met John. Straight after this gig, he'll have turned his bike around and pedalled back to Fort Lynn Road. Two weeks later on from that was the Walton Church Fate gig. That gig took two parts. First, John Lennon and the Quarrymen played in the church grounds in the afternoon, followed by a second gig later in the evening in the church hall. But where did they play? Common folklore says they played on the back of a truck. Even if you watch the film Nowhere Boy, the John Lennon biopic, they have him playing on the back of a truck. But they didn't. They played on a long-lost, fixed stage. How do I know that? Rod Davis, original quarryman Rod Davis, told me so. He even shared with me a photograph of the original stage, taken some years earlier by his dad. But where was that stage? Here's investigation number two, the Lennon stage. This is the famous photograph of John Lennon and the Quarrymen. It's very, very hard to establish exactly where that stage was. Where did the Quarrymen play? At St. Peter's Church. Where is the exact spot? We need to go for a walk through the graveyard. None of these graves were here in 1957. Well, the vast majority of them weren't. This is where the fun and games took place on that lovely summer's day in July. Thanks to Rod Davis, who has provided me with a photograph of the crowning of the Rose Queen four years earlier in 1953, we can see exactly where the stage was. Most of the recent Research I've done online gets the location wrong. At the very left hand corner of St. Peter's Church is pretty much what I would describe as a rubbish dump. It doesn't look pretty, but give me five minutes here because this unattractive piece of land may well form an important part of the Beatles story. First of all, we need to understand the layout of the churchyard both then and now. This is the modern aerial view of the church and this is the boundary. The area above and to the left now belongs to a school. I've just walked from this boundary towards the left-hand corner of the churchyard. This is now my location. This hedge is now the dividing line between the church land and the school. If we overlay a pre 1950 Ordnance Survey map over this scene, we'll see that this whole area used to be church grounds. This is where the church fate was held, and this area to the left was known as the Scouts Field, complete with a scout hut. There was no dividing hedge in 1957. Everything belonged to the church. The photo that you're looking at now is very rare indeed. To my knowledge, it's the first time it's been shown on YouTube or anywhere online. It was taken by Rod Davis's dad at the 1953 Walton Church Fete, four years before the Lennon and McCartney meeting. This is the long dismantled permanent stage that stood for many years in the garden of St. Peter's Church, Walton. This scene depicts the crowning of the 1953 Rose Queen, and this would be where the 1957 Rose Queen was crowned and where John Lennon and the Quarrymen played. 
played. They didn't play on the back of a flatbed lorry. They played here. These children aren't sitting on a filthy lorry to get their immaculate party clothes dirty. They are sitting on a low wall in front of the stage watching the band that would become the Beatles. Look at the length of that stage and its overall footprint. It's easy to imagine that stage being 15 feet deep and 60 foot or more in length. We can't see the edges of the wall, but we can clearly see that this is a significantly sized area which was used for special events in the church calendar. There are several reference points on this photograph and also on Jeff Ryan's famous photograph that can help us to place where this enormous stage was. This modern day photograph was taken by me on the church side of the hedge. It was taken quite close to the boundary fence. I took the photograph from this location. The angles are very similar, but we can deduce from the slightly broader depth of the roof in the 1953 picture that the photographer is standing several feet back and to the right of where the modern photograph was taken. But not much. It would take just a few steps to achieve that angle change. The photographer appears to be standing at a 45 degree angle to the gentleman speaker. Without access to the school grounds, I can't be 100% accurate, but an educated guess puts the photographer about here and the gentleman speaker about here, roughly in the location of the present day dividing hedge. He's the main speaker for this event and he'll be standing in the middle of the stage, probably in the spot where Lennon stood four years later. After all, lead singers typically do stand in the middle of the stage. Let's look at another quite remarkable photograph. Again, you're seeing this here for the first time. It was taken by Rod Davis and it depicts Jeff Rind himself recreating the taking of his famous and historic picture in 2007, the 50th anniversary of the photograph. He'd even purchased a camera identical to the one used in 1957 off eBay to complete the recreation. Jeff is standing in the grounds of what is now the school and standing several feet back, shooting from the right as he looks at the quarrymen in action. Notice the gap between the metal detail on the roof and the chimney. The angle is slightly off and clearly suggests that the cameraman is several feet back from my location and several feet to the right. I've attempted to show Jeff's approximate location on this graphic. John Lennon is looking straight down the lens of Jeff's camera and we can suppose that he's in the centre of the stage. Let's take away the modern day hedge and have an estimation of where the stage could have stood. As we've already seen from the 1953 photo, it's a large structure and we can easily suppose that it completely traversed the modern day dividing hedge. Jeff is looking straight into the corner of the hedge on this photo, so it's a reasonable hypothesis to put the stage here and Lennon slap bang in the middle of it. Let's go back now to where we started at the other side of the hedge. From here we get a good view of two other reference points. This is a different view of the building that we've been looking at. Next door is another church. Notice this part of the roof that we can see inside elevation. This is visible on Jeff Ryan's 1957 photograph. We can see it here just over the left shoulder of T-chest bass player Len Gary. If we look further to the right we can also see a detailed monument sticking out of the trees. This was an ornament perched atop the other church roof. This is the church roof and this is the location of the monument. As you can see, it snapped off at some point over the last 65 years. From this angle, you can see the roof inside elevation and the apex of the church roof with its missing ornament. This photograph from Rod Davies shows where it once adorned the roof and you can see the damage. There's one more detail in Jeff's 1957 picture. On the extreme left of it, he just clips one of the chimneys that we've been studying from the 1953 photograph. So we have three reference points from Jeff Ryan's original snap. Let's look at these three points from an aerial view. The side elevation roof roof and the rooftop ornament are significantly to John's left and the chimney on the adjacent building is significantly to John's right. Let's put in Jeff's shooting location again. That lines up nicely. Even with a significant margin of error, we can still put that enormous stage traversing the hedge. I think this puts Lennon here again, slap bang in the middle of the stage. Let's again look at the publicly accessible church side of the hedge and imagine how the footprint of the stage might have looked. Let's take the hedge away and put in the stage. This is the Lennon stage, and this is where John and the Quarrymen played on the day he met Paul McCartney. A significant portion of that stage must have been in the present day church grounds, maybe as much as half of it. So next time you come to Liverpool, take time out to have a look at this spot. At first glance, you'll be forgiven for thinking it's a humble garden wayside. You are in fact though looking at rock and roll history. The exact spot where John Lennon and the Quarrymen played on that fateful day at the fate. The 
photograph that we've got from Rod Davis, taken by his dad at the church fete in 1953, to my knowledge, has never been seen before. That's never been seen online. There is no clear photograph available anywhere of the Walton Church stage. But you're looking at the location of it right now, and I'm stood in exactly the spot that the gentleman on the photograph is standing with the Rose Queen participants. This is where John Lennon sang Bebop Alula, and this is where John Lennon impressed Paul McCartney for the second time. Lennon played here on the 6th of July, 1957, before he met John Lennon over the road at St. Peter's Church Hall. I'm stood again on hallowed turf, or I should say, hallowed grass clippings. Right after that gig came the big event. John Lennon and Paul McCartney met in the church hall, and in that very moment, the world changed. Let's see exactly where they met, and reimagine where Lennon played for the second time that day. This meeting would change the lives of Lennon and McCartney, and change the world. Today I had the place to myself, and I just couldn't believe my luck. I literally can't believe where I am. I'm in Walton Village Hall, St. Peter's Village Hall, the place where Paul McCartney met John Lennon for the first time on the 6th of July, 1957. This is rock and roll history. The stage that John played on has been removed and it's now in a museum. So you do need to use your imagination a little here. I can digitally put part of the actual stage back in place though to help you out. People who were there that day, including Pete Shotton, put the Lennon and McCartney meeting here, just in front of the stage and a few feet back from the left hand wall. The quarrymen were having a beer, discussing their earlier performance and getting ready for the evening show. McCartney was brought over and introduced to John by their mutual friend Ivan Vaughan. Did you know each other when you were 13? Yeah, really? that's when we met. Really? Yeah. Tell us about the meeting. At Wolfen Village Fate. I was playing at a garden fate in the, oh, the village where I lived. Or playing just outside what? Liverpool. Just playing. playing with a group. In a group. You know, skip group. And he came along and we met. And I knew one of his mates. You know, Ivan was a, sort of a mutual a mate. Hey. Mutual mate of ours. And he introduced us and things. This is a truly historic place. So you need to imagine on the 6th of July, 1957, which would have been a lovely summer's day, John Lennon and the Quarrymen had played two sets behind the church over the road at St. Peter's, and they'd gone down very well. And at this point, they're having a beer and having a rest before the evening show. From eyewitness accounts, this is the spot where they met. I am told that this line here does depict where the stage was battened to the wall. So the stage came to here and was about this high and that's where John Lennon and the Quarrymen played on the 6th of July 1957, later that evening. But it was earlier in the afternoon that John Lennon first met Paul McCartney on the spot where I'm talking to you now, on this very spot. Paul McCartney stood there with his guitar. John Lennon sat here having a beer in the afternoon, getting ready to go on with the Quarrymen later in the evening. If we just forget Elvis for a second, which we can't, but if we do, this is where modern music started. I am stood, would you believe, on hallowed ground. That seismic moment, lovely summer day, early afternoon. John's just played two sets in the church grounds with the quarrymen. He sat over here having a drink with the quarrymen, getting ready for the evening performance. Ivan Vaughan brings Paul McCartney in to meet John Lennon. I assume the reason Paul McCartney had his guitar with him was because he knew he was going to meet John Lennon and he wanted to show off his skills. He played 20 Flight Rock. Eddie Cochran, and apparently that massively impressed John Lennon. It's been well documented by people that were there on the day that this is the spot that they met, and this is where the meeting happened. The meeting of those two human beings on that day, on this spot, literally changed the world. John saw Paul play the guitar right here. A few hours earlier, Paul had seen John sing and play the guitar with the quarrymen over the road. At this meeting, they already knew what each other were capable of. They both knew what the other one could do. They were both aware of each other's capabilities. 
and they were off. Off they went to produce work of such quality and volume that they would later be compared to the likes of Mozart and Beethoven in terms of quality and output. Without the event that happened on this very spot where I'm talking to you now, there would have been no Beatles. And without the Beatles, you wouldn't be listening to the music that you're listening to today. What if there'd been no fate that day? What if there had have been a fate, but the quarrymen hadn't played? We know that the quarrymen only played because the church asked them to, because they were trying to attract the youth to the fate in the local area. And the church committee had heard that the quarrymen played locally. That's the only reason they were here. What if their friend, Ivan Vaughan, hadn't thought to introduce them. What would the world look like and sound like today if Paul McCartney and John Lennon had not met on this spot on the 6th of July, 1957? One thing that Paul McCartney said is when he watched John Lennon play over the road, he was making up some of the words, he didn't know all the lyrics. When John watched Paul play 20 Flight Rock on this very spot, he was impressed partly because Paul knew all the words. The stage that the quarrymen played on started here. You can see this line here denotes where the, the batons attach the stage to the wall. That's quite a deep stage. That's quite a deep stage. I'm stood, okay, the stage is not here, but I'm stood in the spot where the lead singer would have stood on the stage, in the center, or maybe a little bit towards the front. And that lead singer was John Lennon, prior to the Beatles, in the quarrymen. When he was playing here, he'd already met Paul McCartney down there. Paul McCartney noticed that John Lennon had been drinking beer and he was a little bit snooty about it. Paul McCartney did say afterwards that he thought the smell of the beery breath did put him off a little bit but he later said that he grew to love that beery breath. Stage is here, it's just about here where Lennon met McCartney. The most incredible musical partnership of the modern era. From the hallowed spot where Lennon met McCartney, I want to ask you to like this video, that way more people will see it. I can feel that this is a place that history was made. The Beatles didn't start with Beatlemania, the Beatles started here. Every band that you currently know and love wouldn't exist without the event that happened here in 1957. 65 years ago, the meeting of John Lennon and Paul McCartney. The meeting that led to the Beatles, and the meeting that changed the world. There's my three investigations covering just a two week period from the summer of 1957. Please do click the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. It really does help the video to be shared to more people. And please consider subscribing. That way we might see you again. There's lots of content on our channel that's interesting. Well, very nearly interesting. <laughs>